Now that the Metrics Champion Consortium has joined forces with AQC, we have moved all of the metric sets and tools and work group items uh, to the Knowledge Center as well. So I'm gonna take you through and show you where some of these things are. The first thing I wanna show you is in the resource area, we have moved the entire catalog of metrics here. So as you can see, we have quite a few metric sets, everything from Kappa to screening and enrollment, discontinuation, centralized monitoring metrics. In fact, we have more than 300 metrics defined. Some are portfolio level, some are study, country, and site level. And they're broken into uh, various toolkits, most of them aligning with specific processes. In addition to that, we also have some educational material here, such as the metric development framework. This describes the process we've gone through to create these metric toolkits in our collaborative groups. We also have now included metric selection tools, it tells you a little bit more about those, as well as a metric maturity model and program level KPIs. So before I show you a metric toolkit, I wanna show you um, what this metric development framework is. And I've already downloaded um, that white paper just to show you. So when you look at a metric toolkit, you know that there's quite a lot of work that has gone into creating the content of that toolkit. One of the key things to understand is that the metrics all are what we call metrics that matter. Um, the group has gone through an extensive process uh, where they have defined critical success factors. So this is what the members felt were the ways that they would define success of the process that's being measured in the toolkit. And then they've broken down each of those critical success factors in a series of key performance questions. These are the questions they have about whether you're on track to achieve the success that you're seeking or whether you have. And then these key performance questions are what, are what are then used to define metrics. So as you can see, the metrics all have a reason that they're in the kit and they answer key performance questions. And all of the conversations that, and the work that's gone on in the work group to develop these list of metrics are included in the metric definition. So let's take a quick look at what a metric toolkit looks like. One of the more recent toolkits that we have put together is on centralized and site monitoring process. In fact, we're only partway through, but uh, have released part one of the toolkit. We've learned over the years how important it is for people to understand the context um, about why to use metrics. So the toolkit has a lot of components uh, that help you become familiar with the content of the toolkit, as well as how to select and use metrics. You can see here, there's an implementation guide document. There's a, uh, a little recording. So if you rather watch webinars, you have that as well. Um, we have something called a, a, you know, the, the process map that shows the metrics and where they are. So I'm gonna give you a quick peek. Um, so here, here's a quick look at a process map. You can see that there are uh, little colored dots here. This shows you where the metrics in the set reside as well as the type of metrics that they are. And this is a high level process map, um, but you can see that they have more detailed level process maps. So again, the metrics really need to align around um, the process itself, which is why it's so important to have the process maps um, included. Uh, the metric workbook itself has quite a lot of detail uh, that's captured about the metrics. Um, I've already downloaded this so I can show you quickly, uh, but here's why this is so important. All that content that was developed in the discussions in the work group are, is all sitting here with the metric definition. So not only do you get to see what you're gonna measure, how to establish what those performance targets are, what you might look at if you don't meet the performance target, but there's also a statement about what you're gonna do with this information. Again, trying to make sure it's not only telling you what you should measure, but give you that context and why you should measure it. 
And then the last thing um, is one of the metric selection tools. Um, because you can open up that metric toolkit and see lots of metrics, it can be a little confusing or intimidating as to how to pick the right ones for your program. So we have these metric selection tools. Um, in this case, we have a series of issues that the work group members have described and you can select, okay, across the portfolio, um, I'm concerned about the process of issued identification and management is not effective. You can select this and it will recommend metrics in the metric toolkit that you should look at. You can look them up with those particular uh, metric reference numbers. So metric toolkits include a lot more than, um, than simply uh, what's a definition. Uh, and to help you along the way, there are little recordings. So a lot of great information here. And as I showed you at the top, this was just one example. We have lots of different metrics uh, sets here as well. The other thing I wanna show you is that not only have we brought over all of the metric toolkits, um, but we also have, uh, as I said, a lot of groups, a lot of energy and efforts gone into creating these. And there's been a lot of great metric discussions um, along the way. So we've actually organized uh, our content by uh, different functional areas so that you can easily come in and see uh, what's applicable to your area. So I'm gonna go into the risk-based uh, management area. And you'll see, again, we have some webinars that will give you overviews of some of the tools we have. So here we've got operational complexity scoring tool, a risk assessment tool, cost of poor quality estimator tool. I mean, these are tools in addition to the metric toolkits themselves that have been developed by our work groups. We have communities of practice that are gonna to continue to meet uh, under the AQC banner. Um, and each of the community of practice groups has its own area on the website. So I wanna take a quick detour to show you what is included in these areas. They have their own um, little knowledge portal. And many people find these to be a great place to get educated and learn about topics. The one I've opened here it reflects all the work that's been done in our centralized monitoring community of practice group. As you can see, the topics are organized into categories um, and, and these really represent uh, the work and the evolution um, that together as members in the consortium we've gone through over time. Uh, you can see that sometimes we have brainstorming sessions and polling and discussion. Other times we have panel discussions. Um, we have some, uh, some case studies that have, have been shared, uh, especially uh, we're very fortunate to have you know, Pfizer um, and Regeneron and others that were uh, running COVID trials talk about uh, what, how they ran centralized monitoring. So this gives you a good sense of the fact that we have these vibrant communities. Uh, and if you are uh, wanting to learn more and get caught up on, on sort of where people are and what they're thinking, we have a great library here as a resource um, as well. The final thing I wanna show you is uh, we have a meeting calendar. This gives you a really great opportunity to get an overview of, of all the different ways that our members can collaborate. Um, and uh, we've now got the, the calendar all in one place um, so people can register. As you can see, um, we have quite a, a few different options and topics. We've got inspection readiness, safety, et cetera. Um, and I mentioned earlier, we have these community of practice groups that came over from MCC that are continuing. Um, and I wanted to just bring your attention to the fact that, you know, each of these, again, has its own area, uh, similar to what I showed you with central monitoring. So there's a group that's looking at CAPA inspection readiness. Um, and now that centralized monitoring group is now part of the quality by design RBQM quality improvement group that's gonna meet every month.
talk about topics that are uh, in, in the foremost uh, forefront of everybody's mind. Um, we also are continuing to develop and work on new metric sets and updating metrics, uh, including finishing that monitoring metric work group. There's some new site selection and startup metrics and a brand new group that we're launching, um, looking at how to measure uh, patient diversity activities. Uh, and then on a monthly basis, we do have a metric demo and Q&A uh, series where we take a deeper dive into many of the metric sets. So this concludes the demo of the AQC Knowledge Center. If you have further questions, please contact member.engagement at theavocagroup.com.